So hello, everyone. I'm Simone with Unlock Your Design. I'm here today with Ashley. Um, Bella's doing some other work, but we have, we're in the middle. We've just started our season two of our Living the Body series. And we are so super thrilled about this series, The Cauldron, um, med Medicinal Foods, Chinese Medicine, The I Ching, and Human Design. And um, today we're going to do an overview. Um, our special guest, Teresa Padilla, has two doctorates, has studied Chinese medicine in the I Ching for almost 20 years. Um, she joined our portals of conditioning, deconditioning container. And I was so blown away by the wisdom she's been sharing in our portals of deconditioning container. Um, we asked her if she would like to be our feature for season two of Living the Body. Teresa, welcome. Yay. Thank I'm you. I'm nervous today. <laughs> That's okay. I deal with that. That's okay. <laughs> I, you know, I was used to speaking one on one and I'd get on stage in front of a bunch of people fine but you know in here, I'm really nervous. <laughs> I completely understand this has been a, a, an interesting journey for me of being live and I can just say that, um, you know, be with that and I know that it gets easier at, uh, over time from my own experience and by, by episode five you'll be like yeah. <laughs> so Teresa, um, I was so moved by the wisdom that you shared that, you know, in full disclosure, disclosure, I immediately booked an appointment with Teresa and I've started working with her with medicinal foods and I'm learning so much and it's been a really amazing experience and um, Teresa, where would, you know, this is our overview uh, call, kind of um, sharing with people. Do you want to start by sharing your own story of how you came to this in your own life? Or where would you like to begin? Yeah, sure. You know, today I posted something kind of to let people know about that this was going on. And, you know, I woke up. Uh, you know, you remember different things, but kind of hum humbled and grateful. But remembering kind of things with food uh, related in my life. Mm -hmm. And it kind of started off with my mom who had always had trouble with her weight. Mm -hmm. And so she was always doing something you know, I remember some cabbage soup that she made, which was probably one of the best things that she did now that I know the medicinal foods. Um, but she did that for weight loss and she ate that about a half an hour before every meal. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she did lose quite a bit of weight, but it was over a period of time that she did this. And uh, my insight this morning was that that kind of shaped how I wasn't real comfortable with my body from that experience as a woman because it was a struggle for her. And I have a, a six-year-old grandson that he, it's a similar kind of struggle and those things were connected this morning, not with food, but with love and receiving nourishment and being open and, you know, so receptive to when people close down because he's just a bundle of joy mm. and energy and my insight this morning was that you know i'm really becoming aware that food is so is the deepest conditioning i i believe that we have because it's connected with our survival on a very deep level mm. so when we use food to really nourish ourselves, not just fit it in, not just uh, uh, be habitual with it or struggle with it. What happens is that we feel safe, we feel loved, we feel nourished and we can open up and 
let other people love us. And this is kind of the thing that my grandson's going through. So this was all in my mind this morning, um, you know, in relationship to really using food as nourishment. That's really my journey of how I even found uh, the medicinal foods and um, the I Ching is for balance and nourishment in the center of my life. Um, and, you know, I think I've, I haven't had so much of a struggle in relationships, but I've had a struggle in being able to balance like systems or activities and being able to feel okay uh, and really aligned, you know, with that. And having food as a center of that for me has helped me to nourish everything in my life. So that's kind of what I'm going through today, kind of overview. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, really blown away because we started, I started my journey with you, what was it, maybe a month or six weeks ago? Mm -hmm. And having that same experience of food as nourishment and feeling how alive my body feels afterwards. And so it was really surprising to me um, recently when I had this, you know, I have, um, I've been pretty vocal about my 30, the 35 is my evolution sphere. And reading the Gene Keys book and understanding how the 35 has the portal to the collective consciousness of hunger, insert whatever that hunger is. And knowing that has helped me so much. But as a person who has struggled with, you know, weight, I'm five foot tall. Um, it's very easy for me to gain weight and it's very hard for it to come off. It, you know, it's, it's it, I struggled. And um, so I've been working with the medicinal foods and preparing the food and feeling how alive. And, and so a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, I had this experience where I went to the hunger and I ate, you know, three half peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I felt really bad the next day. And that night I didn't sleep much and um, really using that experience to dive deep. And what was it about um, the peanut butter? And that took me to experiences as an infant when my mother, my grandmother tried to force feed me cereal, which I have a soft food thing. I don't eat soft foods and they couldn't force the cereal in. And so they figured out that I would eat peanut butter. And my father was in the Navy and he wasn't there, you know, to in a sense, protect me as a baby. And so uh, my father's in the last stages of Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So there's the grief tied in to um, the hunger and all these things with food. And I'm doing my own work. And I realized that in my own nervous system, food and people have merged. Oh. So as you talk about your grandson, you know, I'm right there with you. And what I'm, what I'm, you know, the nervous system loop that I'm unpacking is how um, eating is about relationships for me. It's about the people in my life and how food and people have merged and how by taking the time to think about what I'm nourishing myself with, not only the people, not only the food, but the people who, who do I, who am I spending my time with? And, you know, what do I value? And, you know, what is my relationship with the person and how that mirrors my relationship with what I'm eating and my willingness to, you know, invest time and energy in the food that I eat and be conscious about it. So it's, you know, I feel like uh, 
there's probably something in the cosmos right now because it's, <laughs> these are things that are bubbling up for all of us. maybe for you who I are thought watching. I better bring my tissue for this one and I could feel it coming on already. Right, right. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, when when you're if I'm listening to you, you know, it's interesting because the I mean, I understand where some way what you're going through with Alzheimer's my when my mom had Alzheimer's and my dad had Parkinson's so uh you know it kind of definitely comes in waves <laughs> and uh in Chinese medicine the opposite of the lungs which grief is the lungs are the organ system that process the grief in our lives. Mm. And the opposite of that is the liver and the gallbladder or the nervous system that works with the nervous system. So when you have something that's kind of dominant, like the grief in your life, so the lung would be dominantly working with, through that grief, helping you work through that grief, the weakest the opposite, is, opposite of that dominant organ is the weakest. And that would be the nervous system. So that goes to the lowest point and or the least line of resistance, which it sounds like, kind of like that memory to use more the least line of the re resistance. You know, but as you're working with that and bring awareness to it, then it you know, comes up and then you kind of raise the bar where they become more you know more equal or more balanced so to speak wow and so then if i'm following you so um lungs process grief so i'm dealing with grief and my the my body goes to nervous system so as the I'm working my lungs and the opposite is the nervous system. So then I'm feeling the pressure of that overworkingness in my nervous system. Is that? Oh, is that what you feel it is, is pressure? Well, you know, like I, um, it activated, I guess, you know, what activated was a nervous system loop in me that began when I was an infant. You know, and so in that experience of overeating, right, or using peanut butter to somehow soothe myself, I could have done a variety of things. I could have said, oh, let me make myself wrong for this or beat myself up or yeah. feel bad about it. But instead, I like dug in and I was like, oh, what is this? And what I was able to uncover was the nervous system loop. And so I didn't, you know, in that moment, I didn't understand this whole connection that you're un revealing for us in um, how the body system is working. So I'm asking you the question of when my lungs are overworking and that they're really activated. And then you said the opposite of that, of that would be the nervous system. So does my nervous, so, you know, what has, so, What's can you talk to us about that it, using, you know, if you're processing grief or something that activates in the lungs, how the nervous system then comes into play with what's going on in your system? Yeah, um, if you can bring up that slide on the triple warmer system, because it kind of works with that. And that would get okay, fantastic. Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna share my screen and um, take us to the presentation and we'll go to present presentation mode. Um, sorry. And then we'll go to this, this yeah. slide right here. Yeah. And that's, that's a, I love that you created that picture, Simone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Talk to us about it. Um, the reason, just a little backtrack, the reason why 
I mean, I wanted to call this, and I think you were synonymous with this or unanimous with it, uh, the series, The Cauldron, is because it is one of the I Ching hexagrams for one. It's one of the ones that just spoke to me. And then when I started studying Chinese medicine, this triple warmer system uh, sometimes is called the cauldron uh, because of how it operates in our body and in our, in our lives. So it's so important, the triple warmer, I'm finding more and more how this triple warmer system is important to us. And I really believe uh, now that I'm really deep in the deconditioning with the uh, Unlock Your Design, uh, which I absolutely love, the portals of deconditioning, um, I am revealing, uh, you know, there's supposed to be this, we have an evolutionary process that's going through our bodies right now that moving into, we'll have a whole new kind of body that operates. It's more receptive and more right-brained oriented and more intuitive and more sensitive. Um, and I really believe that this triple warmer, which is they call the San Jiao. San means three and Jiao means uh, scorch, scorched or burners. Um, so these three, pl uh, places of warmth that operate with all of our uh, system. And in the Taoist lore, the cauldron is the word that's uh, used and it means chakras. So these three really energy transformers that are the triple burners or triple warmers is like an invisible meridian that I believe is helping prepare our bodies for that next mutation that's occurring. And it occurs all the time, whether, you know, I mean, there's going to be, I believe, a, you know, a drastic change in how we operate with our bodies, but uh, all the time our bodies are changing every day. So with your experience, these three warmers, the bottom one, it's people who have studied martial arts, they might know it as the three Dantians. It's, it's the same thing that they use. Um, the bottom one is the fire, and that's related to the kidneys, bladder, large and, and small intestines, uterus, and the test, the gentilia. Then we have the middle one, or the core, and that's related uh, to the stomach, spleen, liver, and gallbladder organ systems. Then the upper, which works with the head, heart, pericardium, throat, lungs, triple warmer. And these three put together, it's like an invisible meridian that processes heaven to earth, earth to heaven, processes the right to the left, left to the right, processes if you are studying human design system, the body uh, design to the personality design and back. And that's why uh, Simone put it, the G center behind that, because this is kind of, it works with the earth element. Uh, that's the core and the magnetic monopole. Um, so the central pillar of love is another place to call it. And with your experience that you're having and the, the experience that uh, I was talking about, this nourish, it's called the ca cauldron because you need these three burners. They're like pilot lights to keep going. They're, they need to be in a balance, not real high excess, like possibly eating for you wasn't that high, but it was too much for you, the three uh, peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, excess, or if you have deficient, you don't have enough food that you're eating every day to provide nourishment, you're gonna have an imbalance. But 
And so those pilot lights need to keep burning in a balanced fashion in order to really remove blockages and have no resistance. And what this triple warmer system does is it works with all the waterways and all of the chi. So it is what allows us to be open and, and also what allows us to be blocked. So like, for example, like the, say you like coffee and maybe somebody drinks coffee all the time. Well, coffee, every, every food has a medicinal property. Coffee is very young oriented. And so therefore it does stimulate the nervous system. Uh, it is a being, so it goes to the kidneys first and foremost, so it would be a lower warmer food primarily, but it does rise to the middle warmer because it's very young and affect the liver and the nervous system. Now, if you drink too much coffee, because this is an extreme young food, it absolutely, absolutely actually flips to the opposite and then it turns into cold and then you can have blocked lower warmer or blocked kidneys because they become too cold because you actually now it's reversed itself that's just an example of how we can work with this what what are you thinking, Simone? <laughs> no, I'm I'm fascinated. So um, you know, uh, I love the example with coffee because I think people can really relate to do, to you know drinking coffee. And um, Ashley asked, what about people who are doing fast? So we have the example of too much coffee flipping the uh, working with the lower warmer and shifting it from fire to cold to the opposite of what it really needs to be to keep that triple burner in flow right yeah. but, so then what about an example of when people don't you know they're fasting or they are not nourishing um the body with enough what happens yeah. then i don't personally believe in fasting for me because uh because of of this and I'll tell you why. The middle burner needs consistent source of nourishment. It needs that food in order to keep the pilot light on. Mm -hmm. And one of my memories this morning that I didn't share was that I used to faint when between 14 and 16, I would just pass out. And um, you know, they called it epileptic at, the, at that time because any, any time of pass, passing out was a form of a seizure. Now I know that I was anemic and I didn't have enough uh, nourishment in my blood to be strong enough with my blood to balance the energy that was rising in puberty at that time. Wow. So I fainted. I lost consciousness. So what happens when you don't have consistent source of nourishment that you feed your all of your organ systems, then they they function in depletion mode and they can uh, stop functioning. The pilot lights or the warmth goes out. When that happens, it becomes a chronic condition in the body because then you're now affecting the yin organs. The outer organs are young and they're more strong and open and uh, more able to handle exposure because that's what they're made for. The yin organs are inside and more internal and they're covered up. And so something affects the internal organs, it, became, it becomes chronic and it takes a much longer time to heal at that, at that time. At this time and one of the I, I see it almost every day there's and I see it mostly in women is that their blood is they're anemic because they just don't have a consistent source of nourishment enough you know and when I started using Chinese medicine in the, in the food therapy, what, one thing I like about it is you can eat. <laughs> you don't have to stop eating. And in fact, when you do 
eat and feed like to one of the things to balance something out is to bring in another food and not to stop eating mm -hmm. and uh i really learned that it's not the food itself that is weight it is the balance of it and the use of it that creates excess or um, deficiency and for example um one of the things that leads to a shutdown is food what i call food stagnation and what happens here is say um there's a lot of things that can lead to food stagnation but one of them is if you uh are eating too much food, that would be an, an obvious thing, right? Because then your body's gonna shut down. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough food, um, the body's gonna shut down purposefully so that it can start feeding itself because it's gonna be in survival mode and it shuts down when it does that. Um, another thing is if we try to eat food in the nighttime when our body's shutting down, and trying to go inside. It's like feeding your yard uh, a bunch of water at nighttime, which a lot of people do, but it leads to a swamp. It can't take in the water because photosynthesis is not taking place. There's no light in order to create photosynthesis in order to absorb the nutrients and take them in. So the water just sits there and builds up like sludge and creates fungus in, in our bodies. What happens? It, it's like a swamp that just keeps uh, building up and creates food stagnation. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we get inflammation. And that's one of the leading causes of actual weight gain. Inflammation. Or an inflammation is food stagnation. So it's learning how to use foods in the right time the right season, the consistent amount, uh, in harmony with your moods, in harmony with your environment, in harmony with the people that you're with, in harmony with light and dark. It's learning to tune into nature to for that kind of balance rather than turn away from it and say, I, I know what I can do, I can do this anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it backs up over time. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So then um, we've, you've given us an example of imbalance in fire, and you've given us an imbalance, an example of imbalance with food in that middle Zhao. How about an example with the upper Zhao, where the smoke mist is? Yeah, that's so interesting. One of my favorite times is fall. <clears throat> and the season of fall and autumn. And part of it is because of the mist that rises, you know, from the open waters and the ground, the open pores, um, and coming from the heavens as well. And when those two meet, it's so beautiful. But this is what's happening in the body as well. You have a fermentation process that's happening in the, in the middle, jiao, that's naturally occurring. And because uh, the stomach is always wants to churn, it always wants to churn. And the spleen is separating out the juices from that. And one thing, I think I talked to you about this, Simone, is a good way to see if you actually have processed your food and it's not backing up is to see if you're, it's called the ileocecal valve, which is actually the sphincter that's at the end of the small intestine and the large intestine. And it's it's on the, the it would be the left side of your body. I'm gonna so, stand up and yeah. let's walk us through, you know, maybe you can do you, but I'm happy to do me. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, right there on the left side, uh, kind of underneath the rib cage. Okay, so here's the bottom of my rib cage. Okay. My hip bone. At the bottom of the, Right, let go now. Go to the navel, your navel, and go to the left. Straight, and then go down a little bit. There'll be a spot, and usually it's a little bit sore sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
that you should feel open about 20 minutes after you eat something if you I don't yeah oh you, i found it i hit it well you know what i got it when it felt sore and i was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't feel that opening up about 20 minutes to half an hour after you eat then you've got food stagnation and what that means is you've got a blockage one of the best things that you can do immediately to help is walk mm -hmm. walking synchronizes you know the right and left sides the body and the personality and and it and it the triple warmer system helps synchronize that so that's one of the best things that you can do and i'll actually if you and if you're in an office building you can walk about 200 steps you know i just used to like make up things after i had to do after i ate lunch and uh, walk around the office go pick up things from different parts of the office so i could get my steps in if i couldn't go walk outside mm -hmm. um so what's happening with that middle jow is that mist is rising off of that fermentation uh that's sitting there a natural process of ripening and also rottening is mm. what's happening mm. and then that mist is coming up and uh an expirate expiration or aspiration and it's rising up and then what's happening is it's going to most moisten the lungs it's going to help us to have that saliva that helps us to break down uh the food in the first place mm -hmm. and um what can happen here sometimes is that we have obstruction in the lungs say okay mm -hmm. so maybe we're eating too many uh too much cheese here's a good one <laughs> mm -hmm. or dairy a lot of people are allergic to dairy and cheese and i believe the reason why is because they have food stagnation so if they have that metal burner that's shut down and you're going to eat something that takes a lot for your body to process it, well, you're going to have an allergic reaction with the lungs because it can't go down. It can't go up. You don't want it going up either, but that's what's going to happen. You're going to have acid reflux. You're going to have all these burning sensation because it can't go down because the foods, the the middle warmer is blocked so that might be okay you might feel uh you might have acid reflux it's like coming up you might yeah. feel, is that belching you belching yeah a lot belching. of belching yeah. yeah uh would that also be bloating the feeling of bloating or yeah mm -hmm. yeah and in chinese medicine we call this uh rebellious rebellious chi mm. because it's going the wrong direction <laughs> <laughs> oh okay rebellious chi goes the wrong is going the wrong direction right and the reason why it's rebellious is because we're creating that rebelliousness <laughs> the body's not we're doing it because <laughs> we're not in harmony with nature or in tune with the body <laughs> wow so that's a good way of saying oh i've got rebellious chi okay it's going the wrong direction so there are different uh things to help with that like say what green tea is one of the best foods to cut fats and to help break down uh cheese and fat and uh, things like that uh, immediately it and does. just a regular green tea any kind of green tea yeah i mean well you know now we have additives to our products <laughs> so i try to get more of a pure green tea I use is called puka, P-U-K-K-A, -K -K or traditional medicinal, or I will just get a natural green tea at an herb place. Mm -hmm. So is what I try to get with my green tea. Okay. And you would drink that green tea after the meal or when would you drink the green tea? Yeah, about maybe 15 minutes afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And that helps a lot. Now, one of the best things for the stomach to help with food stagnation is an apple. Mm. It really is true. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's an old wise saying that is definitely true. Uh, it also helps, is very sustaining. So if you can't eat food and you need something and you can't really 
get some food in right then and an apple is a really good thing to tie yourself over that will help really nourish your body uh, so how does that work how does the you know what's going on there what are the mechanics of we eat the apple what how does that work in this triple burner um okay well the apple is round and most round things go to the stomach uh and spleen uh systems okay so for one it's going to go to this organ system that's pertaining to the triple warmer so that's okay. already you've got something that's going to help you there okay. uh, two an apple you usually have to chew a lot you know unless it's uh cooked in some form but if it's a raw apple you're going to have to chew it so if you chew it that means you're going to create digestive enzymes that help to break stuff down already. What some people do is they drink while they're eating. What happens when you do that is that the body says, well, I don't need my digestive enzymes. Mm. So it just stops the reproduction of the digestive enzymes over time. Um, and the digestive enzymes are there to help once again, break that food down so that you can process it so that you can absorb it in the small intestine and have the excess go down to the large intestine. Mm. Um, so it really is good if, if to not drink while you're eating in the midst of eating to wait. Now, if you have a really dry throat, that's another issue. That's because you're, we've got a yin and yang balance so say that moisture is not really coming off of the food um, and maybe you're um, taking in too many hot foods or uh, a dry food that people use all the time and it's a spice is black pepper. Mm. And that actually helps dry uh, our you know, intestines down, dry our kidneys when you use too much of it. Um, so sometimes the throat can be dry and that's why people want to drink. Um, but if you do, I would suggest just take a little bitty drink, uh, you know, enough to prime the pump, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what? You know, as I'm listening to you, it almost feels like, and I'm I'm looking at the uh, the screen share. I'm gonna go back to the. Um, I have to stop it and then um, hold on just a second. I'm gonna go back to screen share here. Um, Oh, well, that didn't work. Let me try again. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, so those one. Here, yeah, I wanted to take us back to the, the oh, here we go. Um, oh, that's not the right one. I wanted to so imagine, if you will, the 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 um, I'm struggling to get us back there, but the fire, the food, and the mist smoke. Imagine that screen. So as I was listening to you, I, it almost feels like you know, like the first thing that might go out of balance is the fire. It almost seemed like it was a ranking system, and the more chronic things are out of balance, that's when you start to see the mist being out of balance. Is that a fair understanding of? Yeah, that's what can happen. Actually, heart failure, uh, one of the reasons why it occurs is because there's uh, fluid that can't be resolved in the lungs. Mm. And so now if you see how these work together, is that if you've got a block in your kidneys and then that goes up to the the middle burner and then you've got food stagnation there and that gets backed up even farther then it creates a uh, sluggishness within the lungs and the breathing as well as what you're putting in to your body through the mouth then 
over a period of time, I mean, the heart's going to shut down. Mm. So we actually have a lot of things that we can do to aid that to where we don't have to have that happen. And that's one of the things that I really like about medicinal foods is because, you know, if 70% of the population, you know, had a medicinal diet uh, and really honored the food that they were taking in, mm -hmm. the nourishment, I mean, we would have a peaceful, healthy, harmonious, nature-filled environment most of the time. Mm -hmm. It would just have to be that way. So then this is taking us to um, what we're going to talk about over the course of um, trying to get us back, sorry. Um, the course of the whole series, do you want to maybe walk us through um, the progression of each of the episodes? We've kind of gotten an overview today, or was there more to relate the triple warmer to the magnetic monopole before we talk about the overview? I think that's, I mean, I said what I wanted to. Have you, Simone? With yeah, that? yeah, I do. And I, I, it felt like, you know, this is a great segue into connecting the structure of the whole series so everyone yeah. can understand okay this is why we're going to start here and then go here and go here and go here so um let me see if i can pull that um yeah next out. week we're going into um the medicinal foods more mm -hmm. and so we're going to talk more about the properties, the energetic properties of the food. I mean, my teacher that I studied with, he would always say, physics trumps chemistry. <laughs> Almost all the time. And I'm like, okay, what are you talking about here? And what he was describing is that the culture that you grow the food in, the environment that the food is grown in goes into the food. You can't take it out of it. Mm -hmm. um, chemistry is more, uh, you know, related to the amino acids and to not necessarily the environment that something is grown in. Mm -hmm. So what he was talking about is that the physics, the environment will always trump mm -hmm. the chemistry. Interesting. So, um, and that's kind of exciting because when we start talking, we're going to go from the energetic properties of, of foods. And that's when you can start asking questions about different foods that you eat and how you can, uh, what may be something that you might, an ailment that you might have and how can you benefit that and what food would benefit that. We're going to go into that next week. And mm -hmm some recipes that you can use uh, to aid certain things. Um, then the week after that, we're going more into the I Ching system mm -hmm. and working with, you know, where the medicinal food really came from with the 5,000 year old system where they observed nature and how it worked with the seasons. They were, they were the ones that figured out that there actually is an earth element that helps to they, they saw this by observing in nature that between seasons, the, there was an element that kind of went back into the earth and then came back out. They observed this in nature. And that was the earth element that helps us to move through transitions in our life that helps us to move period. That is the, that core or that middle warmer as well is tied to that earth element. So this 5,000 5, year old system has these transits and they relate to our lives and the environment that we live in. So we're gonna learn more about that environment then. Mm -hmm. And then the last week, we're gonna learn more about uh, how that works with the human design system and our color motivation mm -hmm. and our brain cognition with our body environment and that's exciting to me to work with the medicinal foods with that 
super, uh, exciting. super exciting. And I think I can pull the slide back up now. Let's see. Um, I'm going to go to view present. All right. So um, you can see um, next week's agenda. And I'm so excited, Teresa, for you to go into more of this environment chemistry aspect and to hear some, you know, to share some of the medicinal um, foods and, and things that you've been sharing with me that I have really um, loved so much. I think one of the things that surprised me as I'm in the summer realm is that you know, well, I, I, well, two big ahas for me. I've, I'm a cold in my human design. My PHS is cold. And so uh, having eating hot foods, you know, I always had water because, you know, you eat hot foods. And, and for me, um, growing up, one of the beliefs or the things that was said a lot, eat your food while, before it gets cold, eat your food before it gets cold. And I've had this natural thing that I, I really like foods that are cold, but, you know, eat your food before it gets cold. So eating hot food and being Cajun, all the hot spice. And um, that is opposite of my PHS. And one of the things that I've um, noticed with the recipes that you send me is everything's cooked you know, and in summer, I would enjoy, you know, like fresh salad and uncooked foods. And I've noticed that th my summer recipes are a lot of cooked, you know, everything's <laughs> cooked down. And I have, you gave me that fabulous summer soup. And, you know, it's kind of been mine, you know, <laughs> you know, having that shift. I mean, I have to say, I still like a salad in the summer. And yeah, the other day, this weekend, I was eating, I made myself a salad. I was like, yeah, Teresa would probably have me cook all this. <laughs> I am eating it cold, <laughs> uncooked. And then the other thing is this big aha about, you know, always drinking while I eat. So I've trained my body to not make digestive enzymes. <laughs> And, you know, to create the shift of not, you know, well, first off, not needing to drink while I'm eating because of the imbalances that I've created <laughs> over a long time, you know, my whole life, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, as I was listening to you that, I was thinking, oh my God, how long is it going to take my, me to train my body to create the digestive enzymes again? I guess I'll have to eat some apples and chew on something. <laughs> <laughs> make digestive enzymes make digestive enzymes you know and uh, uh, yeah that that's true though a simple exercise and i'll give you this because i i do qigong and uh tai chi and dao yin different things that are medicinal movements as well for the body but this is a form of dao yin and that was one actually one of the first movements, medicinal movements that they gave to the emperors were was the stallion movements. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's it's uh, taking your teeth and cl clacking them together for okay. 40, 40 times. Like a snapping, you know, like a little mm -hmm. skull, you know, the <laughs> you just clean you what is that tap your teeth 40 uh -huh. times and meanwhile what you're doing is you're taking your tongue and on the inside of your mouth uh-huh you're going from the around circulating from the to the left uh -huh. five times and then to the right five times okay. and you're going to click your teeth 40 times so during the 40 times of clicking your teeth, your mouth washing with your tongue or your gum washing your, with your tongue in left counterclockwise and then clockwise. And then you hold your saliva or the digestive enzyme juice at, at your throat. You don't swallow during this time. Okay. And at the end of that time, you're gonna have some saliva built up. Yep. <laughs> and then you swallow it in increments of three. One time you swallow one time, keeping two thirds of the saliva there and then another time and then a third time. And then you let that go down and just feel it going down. 
that is a very medicinal movement that helps you build up that digestive enzyme juice. So 40 clicks of the teeth and then five swipes around the left and five swipes to the right and <laughs> three swallows, uh, one third, one third, one third. Yeah. Uh, Ashley said um, so that sounds so gross. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. But you know, like I, I was like, how do I reboot my digestive enzyme? So I'm like so happy that I have something that I can can do to reboot my digestive enzymes. I'm all over that. You already have me on the apple and the walking and the feeling if my thing is open. <laughs> um, we also have a question. Uh, <laughs> uh, from one of the participants is asking, does it matter what blood type you are, you know, with the medicinal foods? Does that you No, know, I, I haven't studied the blood types, honestly. I mean, I did a little bit a long time ago, but I don't even remember that. I'm sure there's a correlation, but I don't know what that is. So okay. I would work with your doctor on that. Yeah. I'm sure. Um, you know, this is not going to affect your blood type. I mean, I would definitely work with your doctor with those foods. Um, there's a lot of foods to eat. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's foods that you can find that are in har har harmony mm -hmm. with, with the blood type. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, um, this is all exciting. I mean, I've already gotten new things and I've been working with you. So I'm super excited to apply the new things that I've learned. And if you want to join us, let me just uh, click over. So if you uh, love what you have heard from Teresa and you'd like to work with her, mm -hmm. um, you can direct message her on Facebook at Teresa Padilla or you can email her at spiritualrenewalretreats at gmail.com and uh, work directly with her. If you'd like to be a part of uh, Portals of Deconditioning, going through the I Ching Wing wheel with us, Teresa's in, in, involved with us and some other people who try to embody um, the energy, you can join us at um, um, academy.unlockwithyourdesign.com or we put up a bit.ly link uh, bit.ly slash 64 doors dash courses and we're giving a coupon for 10 percent off um, for the liberator and mm -hmm. the initiator if you want to just try one or two do uh, specific doors or if you'd like to join us for the whole um, all of the 64 um, archetypes, doors, wheels, um, hexes, gates, as we go through the whole year in portals of deconditioning, you can join us and we're offering you a coupon code um, to join us. So, um, Teresa, I'm so excited to, I, I feel so very privileged that you or gifting the world this wisdom that you have been working on for 20 years through the series. And I feel like it will change the world when people can nourish themselves with the food they eat. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And for everybody who's watching, we will be live with Teresa um, this time. It's um, Tuesdays, 1.45 through July and the last one is the first week in August, the first Tuesday in August. So that will be our Living the Body Series 2. If you're into Gene Keys and Human Design, we will be making the connections and um, we look forward to you joining us and, and thank you to everyone who posted a question. And, um, um, and can I say one thing, Simone? Oh, please, one, please. 145 uh, is at ET time or Pacific time, and then and then 345 Eastern time and then 845 UTC time, right? Yes, that's correct. I'm so glad you said that. So 145 Pacific, 445 PM um, 
Yeah. Eastern, right. and then 845 UTC. So um, yeah, we put that in the chat too for you for for everyone. So um, what a great day. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who joined us. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Great. Um, what a great hour. I feel like I'm so blessed with all the wisdom you've shared. And I've been working with Teresa as we create the whole series. And I feel like it is really value packed. So we hope to see you next Tuesday at 1.45. Yeah, thank you. And you can still, if you know somebody who wants to sign up, you know, they can sign up anytime. And you don't have to be here. You can watch the replays, right? Totally. Anytime. Let me, uh, let me give the, uh, let me grab the, if you, if you're watching live um, or you're watching the replay and you would like to um, join us. I would have that information written down. Let me just get it and I'll read it off. Um, it is, I'm going to put it um, in the chat and then read it off. It is HTTP, HTTPS colon slash slash bit dot Lee slash LTB2, that means living the body to dash cauldron. So um, you, if you wanna join us live so you can ask questions, um, everyone who joined live was able to ask questions and we, Teresa was able to answer those. So if you would like to be an engaging part of the series, join us at bit.ly slash ltb2 dash cauldron and uh, you can be a part and bring your questions so thanks teresa thanks for that reminder and we will see you guys next week until then take care <laughs>